Good morning, America, and welcome to this morning's huddle brought to you by Going On Offense. My name is Daryl Moon, and I'll be your host today. Thank you for being with us, and we hope you will join the conversation today. We'll be taking um, or talking to a couple of our health coaches here at Orion about what they're talking to their clients about, and we would love to hear from you as well. We're holding these huddles every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in an effort to both be a support to those who are struggling, but also to brainstorm and work together to share and create strategies to inject hope and optimism where there may be doubt and despair. There are four primary purposes for these huddles, to support those struggling, to brainstorm strategies to help, to promote resources for emotional well-being, and to engage collaboration. Now, I'd like to introduce our guest today. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Coach Kelly and Coach Tori. Now, Kelly received her Bachelor's of Life Science and Health Promotion from Brigham Young University. She specialized in substance abuse and has worked in several treatment centers across the country. She has certifications in both substance abuse as well as crisis prevention intervention. Her personal mantra has always been, try a little harder to be a little better. Change did not happen overnight. It starts with small steps towards small, simple goals. Kelly loves anything outdoorsy, hiking, biking, camping, and sleeping under the stars. She is a huge reader and a firm believer in the power of self-education. Tori has a bachelor's degree in public health. She loves the one-on-one -on -one interactions she, she has while being a health coach and seeing the changes in people's lives as they discover their own happiness and healthy living. Being a facilitator for change and a guide for the rewards of a healthy and happy life is her aim. Tori's deep understanding of the value of public health grew as she lived and worked with the people in the Philippines for nearly two years. Tori loves road tripping to seek out random adventures. She's been to the world's largest rocking chair, and she's earned an Amelia Bear heart teddy bear for completing the aviation trail. Now, I'm going to give both Kelly and Tori a chance to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what it's like to be a health coach in the middle of this strange and new world. But before I do, I want to invite all of you to participate in today's conversation. If you're willing to share your thoughts and insights, just raise your hand on your control box. And while Tori and Kelly are introducing themselves, I'll turn on your audio so we can hear from you and you can participate in the conversation today. So let's turn on the cameras. And let's start with... Tori, Tori, would you like to introduce yourself? And then sure, go. happy to. Okay. Um, so my name is Tori. Um, I have uh, worked for Orion for um, just over two years now. Um, started out as a health tech, been loving working as a coach for the last um, year and a half or so. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely been an adventure these last few weeks, talking to people and working with people in the midst of this pandemic. Um, I found that a lot of people, when it first began, people weren't too stressed or too worried about it. It was just kind of this, oh yeah, it's it's going to blow over, we'll be okay. And we've gotten to a point where it's we're seeing a lot more, um, a lot of height, more heightened stress. There's the economic concerns. There's concerns about um, the well-being of family members, and it's just. It's definitely changed our conversations a lot, um, where we're focusing a lot more on mental and emotional health and finding ways to keep going day by day um, in the midst of um, everything that's happening. So, yeah, it's definitely been an interesting experience, to say the least. So, Thank you. Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Um, I've been with Orion for three years, coaching for, I think, a little over two and a half now. Um, love it here. It's really great. We have the best company culture ever. But yeah, coaching over these past couple of weeks and couple of months, I guess, have been really interesting just to hear um, a wide range of perspectives. You know, we have people and contracts all over the United States. So it's been really invaluable to hear from people in every walk of life. And it's been interesting about the increased stress, the increased anxiety, and then the increased fear as well, and how it's affecting day-to-day -day life. Great. So thank you. I'm going to, uh, again, encourage people to raise their hand. Just use the little control box, uh, and where there's a little hand, just click on that, 
I'd love to I'd love to include some people that are that are joining us this morning in the conversation. I may even share a couple names in a few minutes. But anyway, please join us. We'd love to have you participate in the conversation. But I'd love to run a poll just to kind of get a feel or a sense as to um, why people are participating today. So first poll I'm going to launch, so just click on this one, is are you participating for help with your own struggles to help others like family, friends, and coworkers, or some of both? All right, it looks like people have finished. Um, so I'm going to close that and share it. As you can see, um, for only 14% are saying with my own struggles, 29% are participating to help others, and 57 are a little bit of both. I think that probably is a good representation. Um, now what I'd like to do is if you've got a question for our two coaches today, or if there's something you would like to focus on in our conversation today, use the question box in your control panel and share with us if there's if there happens to be a question or you'd like to ask the coaches or a topic you'd like to hear from the coaches. And so um, while I'm waiting for people to see if they've got some thoughts, let's go to our coaches and Kelly, let's start with you. Would you share with us um, maybe in the last couple weeks since this uh, pandemic started, uh, where do you see the concerns? Where are, are people one wanting to talk about this, and kind of what are what mm -hmm. are the concerns? Are they concerns about themselves and their health and how they can improve their immunity, or is it more I'm worried about the fact that I lost my job, or my husband's lost mm -hmm. their job, or my wife's? Give us a little bit of feel for what you're hearing. Yeah, um, it definitely does depend on the person on a case by case scenario. If they've lost their job, then, you know, they're, they're concerned about the economic struggle, struggles, how are they going to pay rent, their mortgage, things like that. Um, but I'd say the majority of people are concerned about their family. They're concerned about their coworkers who have lost their jobs, you know, their moms and their dads and their children who are out of school. I'd say that's where the majority of this is coming from is fear of not knowing what's going to happen to their families and how it's going to affect them. Tori, how about you? Um, a lot of the same. I mean, especially like that uncertainty has been such a big part of it too, where there's a lot of concern about where things are heading. How long are we going to be living like this? Is this going to be the new normal for us for how long? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to be back to normal in a couple of weeks? Um, and then just kind of those general fears of how secure am I in my job? How secure are my family members in their jobs? What about my elderly parents? What about my immunocompromised cousin or whoever? It's just everyone has people they're concerned about. Um, and there's just this constant, I, this constant uncertainty people are experiencing where it's just we don't know what's going to happen next. And that's caused definitely a lot of just heightened fears and anxieties um, among everyone who I've been talking to. Right. Okay. We haven't received any questions, so I'm going to launch another poll. And um, this comes from, by the way, if you're interested, we've attached a few handouts to the webinar today. One is a handout um, by the American Psychological Association about resilience, and I'm actually going to launch a poll. They talk in this article about the four areas of building resilience. And I'd like to know from the audience's perspective, which of these four areas they would like to focus our conversation on today. And then we'll kind of start to ask questions and have the coaches respond in terms of what advice are they giving people when it comes to each of these four. And we'll kind of start with the ones where we have the greatest uh, interest from the attendees. So go ahead and fill out your poll question and we'll get some feedback from the audience. are coming in pretty even right now. Well, things are starting to show some um, preferences. Right now we're sitting at 67% foster wellness, so care of our body, mindfulness, 
50% finding purpose. Looks like people have stopped, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and share it. So it looks like fostering wellness, caring for our bodies, mindfulness, um, and, and things. Why don't we start with that one? And, um, and then we'll go to finding purpose and healthy. So, Kelly, why don't you start by sharing um, what, what kind of advice are you giving people and what conversations are you having with people around just fostering wellness in this time to build up your immunity and such? Yeah, um, a pretty consistent question I've been asking people is how has what's been going on changed your priorities? How have your goals shifted with what's been going on? Because for a lot of people before it was exercise, eating healthy, you know, kind of all the, the same general goals and now things have shifted. Maybe it's exercise is no longer a priority. You know, we're kind of learning about what's most important. And so I'm really encouraging people to focus on what they're valuing right now. And so for fostering the wellness, where wellness and self-care was already really hard before when you were working a nine-to-five Monday through Friday with kids, spouses, jobs, that was already pretty challenging to um, put an emphasis on self-care. But now where we do have more time, um, I'm really trying to emphasize people to, you know, do things that bring you joy, simply for the fact that it's bringing you joy. You know, if you wanted to try a new recipe or go for a walk, really focus on the happiness of the day-to-day -day and keeping those priorities in check. Since you brought that up, I'm going to ask a question. One of our very first huddles, Brent Hale, who's a counselor, brought up the happiness piece. Talked about mm -hmm. how to create happiness. And he referenced a study where in other countries outside the United States, people often look to help other people to create happiness. Where in this country, we have more of a tendency to want to do something for ourselves to try to make mm -hmm. ourselves happy, which he, mm -hmm. he said the study didn't show it was very helpful. Uh, before we move on to Tori, Kelly, share a little bit about what do you find as you discuss with participants and your clients? Mm -hmm. What makes them happy? What are some of the things that they're doing to try to bring peace and, and just happiness in this difficult time? Yeah, and that's interesting because a lot of people have been talking about like, oh, I have an elderly neighbor and we've never really spoken before, but I reached out to him. I left a note on his door like, hey, can I go grocery shopping for you? That's been a pretty consistent trend where people are looking outside of their own small circle within their household to reach out to those neighbors, to reach out to those people that they probably would not have otherwise done. But given this, you know, situation of what's been going on, people are prioritizing their communities a lot higher right now. Nice. That's good to hear. Tori. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of, I've, I've kind of seen a lot of that same, um, those same things happening. And I really love how Kelly mentioned um, just ha helping people to just kind of figure out what brings them happiness, what brings them joy, because that really is such a big thing right now. As people are feeling down, people are feeling like there's, I mean, they just don't know what to do with their time. It's People are finding they have a lot more time than they've had before, and so it's a really um, unique opportunity to be able to help people to figure out, okay, so you have this extra time. What are things that you can do to further your goals, further your objectives and such? Um, a lot of that ends up being about that kind of that self-care, taking time to um, relax, taking those breaks that you need, getting outside, which has been a really big one with so many people who um, are pretty much stuck at home, working from home, can't go anywhere or anything, that getting outdoors and just getting the sunshine and fresh air and such can make a big difference. Um, but yeah, a lot of the things that we're talking about are um, really based around the emotional and mental health. Um, and figuring out ways to maintain and support that when people are socially isolated and just really struggling to figure out, okay, what is the best way for me to be able to keep going to be able to um, just handle the day-to-day -day stressors of life. So. so on that point, we had a question that just came in um, from Kylie basically asking, what have you done to normalize your daily routine? So in terms of your clients and your participants, how much has – the whole shift in normal routine to where now it's a very different normal routine. How much advice, discussions are you having around how do you create some normal routines in this very unnormal situation? 
that's a that pretty big one right now because the majority of people are working from home who have never worked from home before and so they're not used to it they're having to create these routines from scratch I think along with that too you've got now kids who are home um, as well for a lot of people and they're trying to figure out not only how do I work from home with my spouse also working from home but then how do we navigate having our three to six kids home as well trying to help them with schoolwork trying to keep them from killing each other all day every day it's just I've talked to a lot of people who are just like yeah I'm trying to figure out how to create this new normal this new routine for ourselves um, and that ends up being kind of a big part of our conversations and figuring out, okay, where do you fit the brakes in there? Because you need to have that, you, you need to step away for a minute here and there. Yeah. And how do you find that way to be able to create a new normal, a new routine that might only last for a few weeks? It's just kind of back to that uncertainty aspect where we don't know how long these routines will have to last. And a lot of people seem to feel like, well, we'll just wing it until things are back to normal. So, yeah. so we have one of the participants who has raise their hand. Karen, I've turned your mic on, so share a thought you might have with us. Thanks for being willing to join our conversation. Well, I'm an elderly lady who lives alone, and not being able to go out shopping or go doing things that I ordinarily do has been extremely difficult. And so I'm tending to fall into the category of comfort. I want to read a novel. I want to overeat. I want to watch movies and so I'm going downhill in my basic habits what do you suggest I do Tori you want to start yeah I'd be happy to um I think that it's it's one of the that that is a challenging situation because it's I mean you're it's it's a very isolating situation that you're in right now and it's it's tough because you're you want to feel that comfort you want to feel um like just that kind of to figure out ways to develop that peace and you're finding that the the best way to do that is to turn to those things that you feel bring you comfort and um, I think one thing to consider is how how are those things making you feel overall are they bringing that comfort they're they're all bringing that comfort but what else are they bringing on top of that because you have that comfort that comes from sitting and reading a book what else are you getting from that are you also being mentally and emotionally enriched and uplifted from that um, with eating a comfort food. I mean, yeah, that in the moment, it's like, yeah, that's comforting. It feels good. But afterwards, how are you feeling about that? Um, and just see if you can figure out way. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I said, what do I do in place of it? In, oh, in place of it? Um, finding, I think that, like, finding things that can really help you to be able to um, – Feel that comfort in those positive ways is a good element. Um, also finding other things, too, that can help you to just feel good. So, I mean, maybe taking a walk, finding um, other foods that can help you to feel that, kind of feel that comfort. Um, also, I mean, just taking time to um, just figure out ways to find peace in your life. So whether that be mindfulness, if that be... Um, finding a project to do, something to use creativity, something else that can kind of take you in a direction where you want to be heading. Does that kind of make sense? Kelly, do you have some thoughts? Yeah, I do have some thoughts on that. Um, we've been talking about this a lot with people, and um, something that's really become clear to me is that comfort in and of itself is not a bad thing. You know, we want to be comforted at a time like this. And that's and that's an okay emotion to seek out and to remember that. Like, I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel safe. And that's fine. Um, you know, what it, but it's all about what we're turning to. You know, reading novels and books and, like, that's all really great things because that's going to help us lift us, you know, if that's what brings us joy in that moment. You know, like, you know what? I feel like I really need to sit down for an hour or two and read a book or I need to go outside and step into the sunshine. Um, and even sometimes comfort meals aren't always the most terrible thing, but it's how often we're turning to those things. And if it's really, you know, broader picture, is that really bringing us joy? You know, we have to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, is this comfort food actually comforting me? Is it just in the moment or, you know, long term? What's really going to make me feel safe and comfortable? So we have another participant who I'm turning his mic on right now. Bill. Hi. 
Good morning. Good morning. What thoughts do you have on this topic? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, ladies, this is awesome. Thank you. Uh, I love all the input from different views. And last, last, our last session, and I, I don't remember which one of the gals that commented on this, but I'm, uh, I'm the grandpa and a father of four daughters that are 29 through 40. So I've got 13 grandkids and one uh, of my daughters is pregnant with round four and, you know, so they're an interesting time of life. Mm -hmm. So they're all raising younger children, trying to inspire them. The oldest daughter's got high school kids that are all ready to, you know, jump out of their skins and all of that sort of thing. Um, lots of interesting stuff that they're feeling. So one of the comments was, from a grandpa perspective, turn on my computer and do some FaceTiming and read some books over the internet and I just want to get some feed or give some feedback. That was that was a great suggestion. My grandkids love that stuff, even though it's a little weird and kind of hard to hold books and have them more engaged. And but it but it was way fun. But it was it's it's interesting to me because yesterday uh, I got in the car uh, had gotten some Easter stuff together, which is going to be my question here in a minute. Went to the store, got some Easter stuff together, created some Easter baskets, made some homemade cookies and stuff, took it to the, each one of their doors, rang the doorbell, and stood back, you know, like way far away as my children and my grandchildren came to the door. Hey, you know, Grandpa. And I'm standing, you know, 30 feet away, <clears throat> waving Happy Easter, right? And they all had various reactions based on their level of concern, fear, um, uh, I'm just going to say the data that they were intaking. Um, all four of my son-in-laws are professionals. One of them works in the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, they're all levels of education. And whatnot. So here comes the interesting piece. So I'm out doing, I guess is my point, meaning trying to do some things with my kids. And, and, I, and, I, and I love the input from the last one. But how are you dealing with the level of um, fears that are ebbing and flowing in the media um, based on what my children or I watch on any given day, assuming we choose to watch that, um, certainly is affecting the level of fear based on which channel you happen to listen to? And and then in retrospect, comparatively to the overall things happening in the world, you know, what I mean, uh, and 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 trying to get some stabilization of that. Um, how do you, how how are you dealing with, and what recommendations do you have around coaching a grandpa, coaching a dad? Because I'm not I'm not in a state of fear. I don't I'm not. I don't, I don't live there. I don't choose to live in a state of fear. I don't choose to live in that space. But my younger daughters who are raising small children, and some of the children are, are facing fears. One of them, and I don't mean to step in a religious space, but, but I, I will for an example. Um, my oldest grandson is about three months away from receiving an LDS mission call that he has no idea if he will ever even go or what it looks like for the, the LDS church to have missionaries out three months from now, or will they be video missionaries for the rest of their lives? And and so all kinds of interesting fears. I'm just wondering how you coach on the fear space. That's really my question. Kelly, you want to start? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, everyone has some level of fear, some people more so, some people less. Um, but I liked what you mentioned about, you know, where we're getting our information from, you know, the news, the media, things like that. I always advise people, first off, make sure the source is credible, you know, go to your CDC, go to the WHO, go to your county or your state's website, you know, that's where, for the most part, where we should be getting our information from, the most reliable and the most accurate. Um, the news, it's, for the most part, it's just going to bring a sense of panic and a sense of anxiety. You know, that's why the panic buying and the hoarding all mostly happened is because people got this information and it spreads like wildfire. Um, so, you know, panic appropriately. Um, so coaching in a state of fear, really just creating a safe space where people can vent their fears and vent their frustrations. I can't solve the problem. I can't make their fear go away. 
overnight. That's, I just can't. Um, it's not going to happen. But if I can create a safe space where they can talk about their fears appropriately and how to kind of manage their fears, that's really the process I've been taking is just making sure that they know that they feel a sense of safety and love just coming from me and support. Tori, what thoughts do you have? Yeah, um, definitely just creating that safe space has made a huge difference for people because a lot of people will share with me, they're like, okay, well, I'm really worried about this person or this relative and they're not worried or this, I am fine, like I'm okay, but people are really worried about me and I don't know what how to manage that and just creating a good area to be able to discuss their concerns and also just listening is a really big thing right now. Um, one thing that I am encouraging a lot of people to do is just, you know what, take a step back from watching the news for a day or two because that has been a huge, like it's just that's been a huge issue where people are um, watching the news all day every day and it's just really, really bringing them down. Um, and that's what's, as Kelly mentioned, that's what's causing a lot of the fear that people are dealing with is that constant focus on what the news is saying and what they're doing and such and there are so many unknowns that even the news doesn't know and they're just just kind of playing it by ear as things come along and that's it is causing a lot of fear for people um, when there's just this this panic that's kind of induced by the news media and so just taking a step back from that can make a big difference for a lot of people but again it's just it really is a matter of just, okay, let's let's talk about what you're dealing with emotionally and let's figure out some good ways to be able to manage that fear effectively so that way it's not consuming their lives, it's not um, leading them into a state of depression or anything, but finding ways to just deal with that emotion as it comes and be able to create some good coping mechanisms and space for that. Bill, do you have any thoughts about those comments? <clears throat> uh, or any comments yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I I just maybe a little bit of additional thought. I mean, I'm a frame of reference. Uh, I'm I'm a sales guy. I'm a guy who lives on the road. I'm a guy who lives on airplanes. So I'm a guy who is in with the employers, and I'm listening. I'm listening to the fear that an employer has. Um, I'm trying to create a structure for my business where I can make it continue to cash flow. Um, I'll give you a perspective. I've got one employer that's got 700 employees. They've got 51 that have tested for coronavirus. They've had no deaths. They have over 200 people uh, that have uh, helped itself or sequestered themselves to their home. This is a manufacturing facility that provides steel products for people all over the world, and they are in a literal panic state. They're in a literal, what do we do in this environment of trying to go forward and survive and to continue to provide solutions for the world of people that are ordering our products. So you have a level of fear and a level of panic that we have, we have employees, with all due respect to employees, if they have a structure inside of their health plan that says, if you're sick, we'll, we'll, you can be home and we'll, you know, we'll pay you for up to two weeks of sick time. Well, if I just am even scared, and I'm not really sick. I could call in and say, hey, I'm sick. Uh, I, I need my two weeks because I'm just in fear now. And so what employers are having to do is create all of these structures where, okay, well, now you've got to come in and prove to our on-site care facility that you're really sick and you have to go do that. Da, 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 da. So my point is, uh, and my comment is that in the employer space in this America, or in America, employers are fighting like crazy to continue to inspire their people to, that it's going to be okay. And employers are then going home that are all these employers that own these companies who face magnificent risks that while the employees are fearful that they're going to have another paycheck, the employer is fearful that he's going to lose all of his assets, his home, his business that's been going on for 90 years. He's going to, he's going to lose literally everything, he or she. So there's, there's massive fears that, that I, I think we in the industry, we're in the business of health. You two gals are coaches. I'm a sales guy that's out, and Daryl's a salesperson. We're out trying to inspire the public that it's okay. We're going to create solutions. This isn't the end of the world, and there are awesome ways that we can continue to inspire employees. And I think there's probably, in my mind, 
and I don't mean to make this sound insensitive or uh, in any way, shape, or form, but I think there's more opportunity today to help educate people on the benefits of what really does work in the health industry, exposing the stuff that doesn't work in the health, I'm in globalizing the health industry. Uh, what doesn't work, what has not worked. I think we have a magnificent responsibility to help show people the way to simplistic and actionable items that they can do to empower themselves. And I think there's never been a more significant day in this world or in this country than right now. And I, and I don't mean to make it overly opportunistic on the backbone of people are suffering and dying and that sort of thing. Uh, people have been suffering and dying for generations. So we've had three times as many deaths from the flu as we had from coronavirus. We've, we've got 10 times as many deaths from, from hunger, uh, people dying of hunger. You know, so, so in retrospect, we've got lots of stuff we can motivate and inspire people with. And I just think it's a really significant time for us that are on this call and maybe some that are listening to help work together to create solutions. Look for solutions first. Don't look for fear first because it's, fear is easy to find. All you got to do is wake up <laughs> and, and, uh, and look around and listen to noise. The other side of it is, 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 as asking myself and others questions and inspiring each other to say, boom, here's a solution. Here's what I'm going to do to lift. Here's what I'm going to do to inspire. Very small things that are big things. Anyway, just, you know, I know that's a bit philosophical, but you, you have in your hands at, at, at Orion and, and I have in my hands with, with wellness and prevention care the ability to really significantly influence a lot of people's lives. And I think the more we do it and the more people that embrace this and the more people listening on this call that are doing it, um, we need to do more of it. We need to step the game up. Thank you, Bill. A question came in um, that I'd like to pose to both question or to both coaches, and that is, how are you addressing your own self care as a health coach? Often, caretakers such as nurses, health coaches, counselors, etc., often put their own health and wellness second. Are you utilizing resources like other coaches or support systems to support you? Tori, you want to start with that one? Yeah, happy to. Um, yeah, that's definitely been a, a big thing these last few weeks. I mean, there are days where it just seems that call after call are people who are dealing with um, very high levels of stress and anxiety about everything going on. And it, it can definitely wear on you if you're not taking breaks and making sure you're getting that good self-care time in. A um, couple things that I've been doing, I mean, just taking breaks throughout my day. Um, making sure that after a, a longer or a harder call that I give myself a few minutes to just, okay, get up, walk around a little bit, take a breath, just relax for a second. Um, and then just also making sure that throughout, um, just like when I'm, when I'm not on the clock, just take it, making sure I'm, I have good mental health and physical health practices going on. Um, just getting outdoors has really been a big thing, just going on a walk. Um, just around the neighborhood makes a big difference and just making sure keeping up with good nutrition, taking just making sure that I'm finding good ways to be able to um, just relax, like finding like sewing projects or cooking or whatever it is that I can do in a day to be able to just take that mental break and just take a step back from everything um, has really helped me to be able to just keep going. But especially on the clock hours, um, just finishing up hard stuff and then just taking a step back and breathing for a minute has been a big help for me. Thanks. Kelly? Yeah, I would have to 100% agree with everything that Tori said. Um, luckily, we have a pretty open dialogue between all of the coaches, so pretty much at least once a day we're all checking in with one another, making sure that we're doing okay because what we do is already a pretty emotionally taxing job in the first place. Um, and so, and with this whole pandemic going on, it's it's heightened even more. And so making sure to, like exactly like Tori said, get up, even if it's just for five minutes, step away from the computer, step away, get some perspective, you know, go outside for five minutes or something like that has been really crucial in order to not to feel burnt out or like I'm overtaxing myself. Nice. I'd like to go back to Karen's question. I'm going to turn her mic on. Um, I'm not sure we really circled back with her, and I'd like to invite if anybody else on the phone would like to share some thoughts that might help her in her situation to raise your hand. Um, 
Karen, let's come back to you and ask whether or not the ideas and suggestions from the coaches have been helpful or whether you've got some ideas you'd like to share that might be helpful for other seniors in your situation. Well, yes, they made some comments. I don't remember who said it, but how does it make me feel when I indulge in comfort things? I always come away feeling like I've been too self-focused, that I wish I could do something for someone else, that I could get out of myself. And I thought, perhaps a, person, a telephone call to, to plan an outside meeting with someone would be kind of fun. In other words, tell them that you're coming at a certain time and then just stay outside and stay at a distance and just at least have a chance to visit with someone else and feel like you're doing something for someone besides yourself. Those are good ideas, and I appreciated the suggestions. Well, and to that point, one of the comments on the article that is available as a handout uh, is one of the four main things you can do to build resilience is find purpose, such as helping others, being proactive, you know, moving towards goals that you've set for yourself. Let's talk a little bit about that idea of finding purpose and helping others. If anybody else has any thoughts or ideas that they'd like to jump on the phone call about, please raise your hand and I'll turn on your, your phone. But um, Kelly, have you had some contact with some of your participants around this idea of going out and finding purpose as a way to build resilience right now? Yeah, absolutely. It's been really interesting to see how not only businesses but people have been adapting with what's been going on. You know, how do I how do I seek that connection um, without being able to you know get within six feet of another person who doesn't live in my house? And so um, people have been really creative with you know. Um, and like what Bill said, too, about like FaceTiming with your family, reading them books over the phone, you know, going to visit people, but staying away, just reaching out and letting people know that you're there. Sorry? Um, I think another thing with that, too, just kind of building on that, um, finding ways to help other people has been a huge thing. Um, some some of the people I talk to work in industries where they are helping people on a daily basis, whether that be with um, figuring out their mortgages or in a healthcare setting or anything along those lines. And they've found that by really making sure they're making a difference in people's lives as they go about their job on a daily basis, it has really helped them to be able to just keep going in the day-to-day -day swing of things with everything going on. Um, I love the the thought of just like, yeah, FaceTiming or giving a phone call or going over and just staying outside, staying six feet apart. Those kinds of things can really help to build those connections and keep that mental and social health um, in a good place during these challenging times. Um, and then just finding little ways to help other people as you can and are able. Um, I know some people I've talked to have been doing like sewing the face masks and some people are going and grabbing groceries for other people and just finding those things that are keeping them um, connected with society and with other people has definitely played a huge role in mental and emotional health. So one comment that just came in from Shannon was that she highly recommends the book Man's Search for Meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Victor Frankel, he speaks powerfully about the topic of purpose. Anybody have any experience with that book and may want to share uh, maybe what that book's about? Anybody familiar with that book, Man's Search for Meaning? I'm familiar with the book, but I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. um, Jenny, would you like to jump on the call and maybe share your thoughts? <laughs> I'm going to put it on the spot. Raise your hand, Shannon, if you're willing to jump on the call and share your thoughts about the book, Man's Search for Meaning. There she goes. Go ahead, Shannon. Sorry, I, you caught me. I was eating chocolate, some Easter candy. <laughs> Is that a comfort food? <laughs> it's a comfort food, yes. No, it's a fantastic book. I've read it actually a few times when I need inspiration. And it's basically Victor Frankl. He was in the concentration camps. Mm. And he talks about his experience in there and that the, the people that survived tended to be the ones that found purpose and meaning in the smallest things and had something to live for. So it's just a, it's an amazingly powerful book. It's not, it's not a long read at all. You could probably read it in a day. Um, but I've recommended it to several people through this crisis, and it's really inspirational. 
Nice. <clears throat> Anybody else have any thoughts along this idea of finding purpose? If not, let's move on to healthy thoughts. So the next thing that people said they wanted to talk about in terms of building resilience and responding to this is healthy thoughts. So keeping the right perspective, optimism, learning from past experiences. Kelly, any conversations you've had with any of your participants around this idea of just keeping healthy thoughts? Yeah, that's a um, that's a good one. You know, I think we've touched on this before, but it's you know how do we how do we keep our thoughts positive? How do we you know that kind of idea of self care, keeping that positivity going on? What's been bringing us joy? Um, so yeah, that's definitely been a big focus of conversation. Of you know how can I really make sure that I'm taking care of myself and making sure that like throughout the day that I'm keeping those stressful thoughts away and really making sure to have some kind of overall perspective. Tori. Daryl, I'm, oh, sorry. Oh, Bill, go ahead. No, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Tori. I'll follow you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, I think some people have really shared how they're seeing like the bright side in the situation, and that's helping them a lot. Where in their like just normal day to day, it's like things are hard, but they're enjoying the extra time they have with their family members, or their working from home has been a positive experience, or they're finding new ways to connect with people or reach out to people they haven't talked to in a long time, and that's made a big difference for them. Um, another thing I've gotten into a lot with people is just gratitude and just finding ways to be grateful for or find something every day to be grateful for, even if it's been a hard day that they can still find something in their day to that brought them happiness, that brought them joy or something good happened. Um, and that's one way to kind of shift that thinking and be focused on and like just stay optimistic through whatever comes along. Gratitude is a great idea. Bill? A uh, couple thoughts. Uh, and and Karen, relevant to one of yours, um, uh, my folks are in their 80s, and uh, one of the things that we've done with them is uh, connected them with technology, so they have their little iPad, you know, that they can, and they have it connected. They don't really know how to use it very well, um, but they are connected to all the family members, and they can call and FaceTime family members, and we can FaceTime them. But they're having a lot of fun right now in this uh, chapter of their life, uh, and they are recording history, family history, meaning their stories of their lives. And they've always been so busy, you know, that they just really didn't get around to that. But now they've got all this downtime, and the kids can't come around, and nobody can come around, but they're doing tremendous work in that space. That might be something fun for you because everybody's got a history. Everybody's got a story. Um, that's fun. My folks are eating that up. Um, as far as positivity and just uh, just staying positive for me, one of the things that I do every day, um, actually I do it three times a day. I do it early in the morning. I do it uh, somewhere either at lunch or dinner, and then I do it again before I go to bed. And that is that I've created um, just some thoughts around my purpose. If you're not clear on your purpose or what you really want, uh, you know, just start journaling and writing down some thoughts about your purpose. And then what happens from that, once you kind of know you know, my purpose is X, whatever it is, that then you can create some statements for yourself, which I have a, a page of those that are nothing but just just dumping positive information into my brain about what I am, what I want to do, and how I want to do it each day. And I read those three times a day. So I'll read them four times each, just like I'm exercising my brain, where I'm instead of doing push-ups or sit-ups or whatever, I'm exercising my brain with that positive information three times a day. And so those statements of positivity give me a lot of encouragement, and then my brain seeks ways to find a way to produce those outcomes. Uh, whatever religious belief you have, we all, I think, understand at some level what you think about owns you and controls you. So if you think about positive things, as a man thinketh so is he, as a woman thinketh so is he, he is so is she, um, those things matter. What we think about controls who we are and what we are. And so if we think positively and we come up with ideas that are supportive of our, 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 uh, our purpose, even if we don't maybe have absolute clarity around our purpose, you do, every one of us do have positive things they can think about 
themselves and about others and just focus that's a, if that's where you start that's where you start and nice. then you can get more efficient at it Kylie I turned your mute or your audio on you have a comment would you like to share yeah actually everything that you just said Bill is just so right on when it comes to what you think about most you become and something that I do every day I try to do every day that's super, super helpful with, especially the situation now, is I have something called a Start Today Journal from one of my most favorite mentors from Rachel Hollis. And it basically has five sections of where you can write down something that you're grateful for. And something that she shares is when you're writing down something that you're grateful for, think about it like, and how it makes you feel. So for me, uh, the other day, my husband, I usually love to have like lemon water in the morning. And I was really busy with work and all of a sudden he got up and got it and I was like, wow, like thank you so much, like such a simple task. I'm so grateful my husband was aware of my daily routine and got me a lemon water. So when we write down things that connect emotion to our gratitude, we feel it a little bit deeper. Um, another one for me, it would be like a sunrise or a sunset, like how that makes me feel. And if you can reflect on that gratitude, it, it, it heightens that, that feeling and then it stretches out throughout the day. You're, you're more aware of those little moments or those feelings that make you feel that way. Um, so I love that. Nice. So to wrap up today, I would like to have, just give everybody a chance if they've got any kind of closing comments or thoughts they'd like to share. Let's start with Karen, since she was our first attendee that was willing to jump on. Any closing thoughts or comments, Karen? I just want to thank everyone who participated. You've all made a lot of suggestions. I've been making notes, and I feel like you've made a lot of suggestions that will be very helpful to me. And I also am in my 80s, and I have a very large family, and it's very hard to keep in touch with all of them because I feel like I'm short priorities. That's not a good attitude. I need to be more positive and think, well, if I only do one today, it's better than doing nothing. So I appreciate your thoughts and your ideas, and I thank you very much. Bill. Any, any sorry. closing thoughts? <laughs> sorry, I, didn't, I was talking to myself. Um, uh, no, you know, listen, I just think that this is all extraordinary, what's going on here. And whether you're a member of this group uh, or whether you're a member of other groups, um, this positivity matters big time. And I salute Daryl and everybody else who participate each uh each day that this is done, uh, I would just encourage um, everybody listening to invite, invite, invite more people uh, to be a part of something positive and to continue to uh, look beyond um, concern, look beyond fear, and know that we're in a know that we're in an extraordinary time in life, uh, and and make the best of this. There's something to be learned from every day of this. True. Shannon, any closing thoughts? Um, I would just really want to thank the health coaches. Um, I think they've been doing an absolutely fantastic job. Um, I know that they are playing a critical role in helping people get through this. And hopefully this will drive you know, the importance of having, you know, an important relationship with someone that supports your goals and helps you through all the obstacles in your life. And, you know, and when the next crisis hits, we'll be more prepared, and we can really change healthcare in the long run if we if we apply some of these principles that we're applying when it comes to health coaching. Thank you, coaches. Thank you, Kylie. Any closing thoughts? I did have an idea um, when it comes to doing something that makes you feel like you might have a little bit more purpose. I know something that my grandma has been doing is writing letters, and I know that anybody can actually do that, and it shows that you're thinking about a person, and you have a, t you have a moment to sit down and think about that person and what you appreciate about them. And then a second thought that came to my mind as we've been talking is faith and fear cannot coexist. 
and I was just trying to think and reflect on how we can have more hope and more faith in the good and what possibilities that are good around us. And if we can just fuel that hope and fuel that faith and by bringing those positive things into our life, it's going to dim that fear and it's going to light up that hope and that faith in these times. And so... I hope you guys take that moment to, you know, reflect on that quote, faith and fear cannot coexist, and then fuel that fire and hope. Thank you, Kylie. Tori, any closing thoughts? Yeah, um, I think that just a big a big thing right now is just take take a moment during this time to just figure out what your priorities are, what you want to be doing, because this is such a, I mean, it's such an unprecedented time where, I mean, there's, it's, no one ever really expected for something like this to happen and it's a moment where we're all to all of us are dealing with it like every single person across our country is dealing with this in some way across around the world and it's a good time for us to all just come together help and support one another um, and find find ways to just build positivity in the world and that is such a huge thing right now just staying optimistic staying positive and just finding those ways day by day to make that a part of your life. And by doing that, it's like you can be helping the people around you as well as keeping yourself in a good place through everything that's happening right now. So, um, yeah, just Thank doing you. your best day by day. Kelly. Yeah, I just want to echo off of what Tori said. Um, even though, you know, everyone is going through a hard time in some way or another, I am very grateful for the opportunity that I do get to talk to so many people and I do get to learn about these perspectives because otherwise my world would look very small. And so I'm grateful for that opportunity that I can, you know, broaden my scope and learn about the perspectives of people all across the country and um, you know, something I've been trying to tell people is we're all dealing with this for the very first time, you know, for the most part, no one's ever had to deal with this before. So whether you have a good day or a bad day, you know, just wake up and be like, okay, I am here today. What am I going to do to make myself feel better? What am I going to do to help others? And let's just keep moving forward. Super. All right. Well, to wrap things up today, let me just share with you the um, Wednesday, April 15th, Amelia Forchick will be back with us along with her friend, Amanda Robbins. Amanda is a business coach with Performance Coach University. The theme of the huddle will be about making the most of extra downtime. This Friday, April 17th, Dr. Stephen Shimp will be joining us to discuss resilience from an MD's perspective. Dr. Shimp is a retired CEO of the University of Maryland Medical Center and the CEO of the University of Maryland Medical System. He's an internist, a researcher, an educator, a professor of medicine and public policy. He's the author of many books, including Longevity Decoded, The Seven Keys to Healthy Aging. Immediately following the huddle today, you'll receive an email survey asking you for feedback on today's huddle. We encourage you to complete it to give us feedback on how we can make these more effective. Also, please send us your ideas and suggestions for themes for future huddles. Again, if you would like to be a guest to provide your input as a panelist, or if you know someone you would like to recommend, we would love to hear from you. To communicate with us, simply use the contact us form on the website goingonoffense.com. We want to thank today's participants and guest panelists. Kelly, Tori, Bill, Shannon, Kylie, Karen, thank you all for participating today. And please remember to check out the wonderful offers of help on the help page of our website. We also want to let you know that we'll be posting the recording of today's huddle on the website later today. Now to wrap things up, I'm going to play a music video that I tried to play the other day, but it didn't work. And I think I've got things figured out, so I hope you can enjoy it. Before I do, I want to remind everyone that we are giving a $1,000 reward to the video that uses the hashtag going on offense that encourages people to do what Dr. David Price suggests, which is to protect yourself from the virus, keep your hands clean, don't touch your face, and keep your distance. The video that gets the most likes on social media by the end of April will get $1,000. So pass the word along. We'll sign off now and say goodbye and hope you will join us for another upcoming huddle. Again, we hold them every Monday, 
Wednesday and Friday at the same time. I hope you can enjoy this music video about keeping your hands clean. <laughs>